everybody, it's me again, Ike and... Christine, hi. And Christine's got something in her hands. Nice chunk of silver. And yep. it's a half ounce of pure silver. It's got a cool skull on it. Check it out. Can you see it? Is it gonna focus on it? All right. Like we said, this is gonna be part of a giveaway when we get 100 subscribers. This sweet baby is out of here. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, no, just the, kidding. Give me that. <laughs> we'll find it later. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since we've done an episode because somebody was gone. Where the heck were you? In Alabama. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in Alabama? Nothing special. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in Alabama playing uh, Army, weren't you? Maybe. Okay. I'm not supposed to tell people. Uh, I think you can say that. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, the silver bar, we'll give it away when you hit 100 subscribers. Make sure when you subscribe, you're not blocked so I can read your who you are. Otherwise, it'll be hard to give away. And let me give out my email real quick if you want to email me directly. It's idkparanormal at gmail.com. Or you follow me on YouTube at idkparanormal. All right, so this story is about a haunted house I lived in in Berlin, New Mexico. And this is before I was a police officer. I was... Uh, Probably 1982, so I was five years old. Well, not really. I was uh, uh, probably in my 20s, early 20s, 20, 20, I think. And uh, we had moved into a house. It was an old adobe house that was probably built in the 40s or 50s. And somebody had added on substantially to it. Starting to sprinkle. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a small adobe house and somebody had added probably four times the size of the original house to it. And it was added on really nice. I mean, it had an indoor greenhouse, beautiful place. And uh, we may have to stop this for a second if it keeps raining. I don't want my camera to get wet. You can hear the rain in the headphones. Hey, we're back. We have to move inside. It's raining like mad outside. Uh, plus my chair gave out. No, uh, that was kind of unexpected. I also wanted to mention to get back into the story that all the stories that I tell are 100% legit. I wouldn't have no purpose in uh, making stuff up or embellishing it. Um, there's no point in that. This is a true depiction of what has happened. Some people are not going to believe me. They say, well, you've had a lot of experiences. I'm like, well, maybe I just had my eyes open a lot. So anyway, back to the story. Uh, so, so there was this old adobe house that had been renovated. Somebody added on quite a bit to it. Had an indoor greenhouse, uh, cherry wood floors, oak paneled walls, beautiful place. And it looked like it had been empty for many, many years. And somehow my dad managed to get this place for us. And um, it was probably August. And uh, we went to look at it and the place is completely covered in weeds. I mean, you couldn't even get to the front door. The weeds are probably five feet tall. So my sister, my girlfriend, and I, our job was to go over there and <coughs> clear out weeds. And we use a machete to, to clear the weeds. And it was in the middle of the day, and we're chopping weeds, and we're getting thirsty. And my girlfriend and I get in my truck, and we drive to a gas station down the road to pick up something to drink. And my sister stayed there to chop weeds. And when we get back, she had locked herself into my mom's car. And she was white as a ghost and just screaming like, hurry, hurry, get over here. And uh, I asked her, what's going on? And she goes, well, there's a dead guy laying in the weeds. And I'm like, where? And she points over to the big pile of weeds. And I said, what do he look like? And she goes, well, he's a big white guy, bald-headed guy. I'm like, all right. So I grab her machete and I walk over there and we start stomping around. And we didn't see anything. We just thought, eh, that's weird. But she, she swore up and down there was a, a dude laying in the weeds dead and there was nothing there when we got there. So that, that was kind of the beginning of what this house was all about. Um, you know, eventually we got the weeds cleared and we, we moved in. And uh, my first, the, the house had a creepy feeling right off the get go all the time. Every time you were in there, it just felt creepy. My bedroom was uh, in part of the old adobe and uh, we had no electricity. You know, we weren't rich people and we, I don't know how we managed to get that house, but we couldn't afford to get electricity turned on. So we were using kerosene lanterns and candles and stuff like that. And my bedroom was in the old part of the house. And one night, not too long after we moved in, I'm laying in my bed and uh, I'm reading a magazine and I hear this girl's voice. And it was loud, it startled me. I mean, uh, 
I thought it was my girlfriend or my sister. And uh, I almost jumped out of bed. I'm like, oh shit, they're spying on me. So I look out the window, it's pitch dark. I go into the living room. The only one home's my dad, he's asleep on the couch. I walk outside and uh, there's nobody there. Uh, that voice was for real. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to describe. I heard a woman's voice. Uh, <clears throat> more and more stuff started happening as we started living there more, you know, I started getting used to the place. Uh, every day stuff would disappear. You could walk into the kitchen and lay something down. And yeah, when you came back, it was gone. And we're all young, we're thinking, you know, we're all pulling jokes on each other, and eventually we realized it was none of us doing this. Uh, one day we're all hanging out outside the front, and uh, this pickup truck pulls up, and this elderly gentleman, Hispanic guy, gets out and he introduced himself. He says, how you guys doing? Look fine, what do you want? And he's like, uh, <clears throat> you guys moved, just, you, know, you guys are new to this house, you guys just moved in? I'm like, yeah. He goes, how do you like it? And I'm like, well, it's a beautiful place. It needs a little work, but it's beautiful. You know? And he goes, um, and I, I remember telling him, I said, yeah, the place is a little creepy. And he goes, yeah, it should be. He goes, nobody ever really lived there for a long time. And I'm like, hmm. And he said, the place has been empty for probably five to six years. Hey, hey, how's that? How's that for a little added bonus? <laughs> <laughs> the ambience. I like it. So, uh, he, he commenced to tell me the story, me and my, my girlfriend, that uh, about six years ago, the family that had lived there, they're the ones that renovated the place and added all this stuff to it. And they had an unfortunate accident where the wife was backing up the car and uh, ran over their five or six year old child and the child got killed. And they ended up uh, moving out. They fell apart, the family broke up. And he said, prior to that, there was a family living there, and they had all kinds of issues, and they moved out. And he says, the house is really a bad place, that the land is bad there, and nobody's ever been successful there. And he kind of like wished us good luck. He goes, well, you guys have fun, be careful there. And we're like, hmm, all right, creepy guy. See you later. Uh, <clears throat> but he wasn't lying, because as time went on, just, and this, this, all of this happened from August to Christmas. So not a very long time. So every day more and more stuff would happen. We'd hear voices, we'd hear footsteps, constantly hear footsteps. Uh, my sister and my girlfriend, who was living with us, started having nightmares about the place being on fire. I mean, strange nightmare. They would, you know, my sister would wake up and she goes, oh my God, I said the weirdest dream, the house just burned down. And I, you know, me being the macho man, I'm like, yeah, I grow up, it's nonsense, don't be dumb. It's just stupid dreams. And my girlfriend was having the same dream. Uh, they both of them, they just, I thought it was just mass hysteria or whatever. But they continuously had that dream, you know, at least three or four times. Um, one incident, we're all sitting in the living room. And just keep in mind, this had four big rooms in the center of the house. And they, they were like, you know, a large living room. And there was four of them. And in the center, if, if you had four squares and you picked the center of the four squares, was a fireplace. It was a huge fireplace. So we're all sitting in the living room, and my mom's sitting in a rocking chair. And it's like midday. And we're all just talking. And uh, my mom, she looks at me and she goes, I think my rocking chair is rocking by itself. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're just bullshitting me. And she goes, no, no, really. And so, you know, I was curious back then even. So I said, you know, pick up your feet. She picks up her feet and the chair is rocking and I'm like, you're making this rocking. She's looking scared. She's looking at me like, no, I'm not. So I grab the chair and I walk up behind her and I grab the chair on, on the backstroke and the chair is pushing itself forward against me holding it back and there was definitely someone pushing this chair. And uh, you know, my mom was probably in her 60s and she's like freaking out in this chair. As I'm wrestling with this chair to keep it from rocking, a uh, cow skull that was hanging on the fireplace wall is one of those Santa Fe art pieces. It was a big cow skull covered in turquoise. Uh, there's no more sound effects for you. The real thing. This cow skull, fall, skull falls off the wall and one of my friends was sitting below the fireplace and he's a smoker and he had a big lighter laying there and the skull hit the big lighter and exploded it. And little cow skull, I mean a little turquoise rocks just flew everywhere, just shattered. It was like glass breaking, you took for turquoise all over the place. We found that pretty odd. Um, <clears throat> so like I was saying, uh, I'll just start from the beginning. 
my dad was a career military guy, 32 years in the Army, 82nd Airborne, all that stuff. With the three wars, uh, that guy didn't believe in anything except for, you know, maybe some vodka and beer. He wasn't into the paranormal or any of that stuff. And one day I'm in the living room talking to him. There's more thunder in the background. Maybe he's listening to me right now. Uh, one day I was talking to him and he said, I hear people underneath the house. I hear people talking. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's just crazy talk. And he goes, no, really, I hear people underneath the house at night. I'm like, wow. The house didn't have a basement. You know, there should be no reason for anything to make a noise or people talking underneath there. So uh, that was kind of strange. I guess that early in the footsteps, you could hear them all the time in the house, and it was legit footsteps, like boots walking on a wooden floor, and I had a wooden floor. And it started getting so bad to where we started sleeping. We'd all sleep in the sleeping bags in the living room, uh, you know, because we're too scared to go to our freaking bedrooms because there was just too much stuff happening every day, every night. So I'm laying, I'm, uh, <laughs> it is rain. You hear that? What do you think of that? Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm, uh, we're, we're all sleeping in sleeping bags, sleeping bags on the living room floor. And I get woke up and I hear these footsteps coming towards me. They're, you know, probably 15, 20 feet away still. But you can hear them just stomp, 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 stomp right at me. And I look over to my St. Bernard who was sleeping with us. He's up and he's growling and he's pissed and, you know, he's scared. He doesn't want to go attack it. He's just kind of like looking at it and trying to back up at the same time. I'm like, oh, hell with that. So I grab my gun and my flashlight and I start heading up that direction. And as soon as I turn my flashlight on, <clears throat> the footsteps stop. And this was something that happened continuously, yeah, almost every night. It was so bad that deep down, all of us were wishing, you know, we'd move. We'd, <laughs> we'd rather live in a tent than live in that house. It's as beautiful as it was. Uh, it's hard to describe, but I, I, we all were hoping to move the heck out of there. Um, the closer it got to Christmas, it seemed like the more the activity went up. Uh, it, it was weird. You'd find doors open that were closed, kitchen cabinets, drawers pulled out. The next time you, know, you walk by, they're closed. You come back, they're open. It was insane. It was like a movie. It was like an Amityville movie, you know. But this was for real. Uh, so Christmas, Christmas Day comes around. And once again, my dad's asleep on the couch. You know, it's probably all right, it's late afternoon, probably 4 or 5 o'clock, just before it gets dark in wintertime. And uh, my mom and my sister and my girlfriend, uh, they're all preparing something to eat in the kitchen. And uh, I came from my bedroom, I was getting something, I'm, I don't remember what, but I walked into the living room and I heard this noise that sounded like, it sounded like a, a train and there was a, a railroad track nearby. And first I thought it was like, hey, there's a train. But then I look up and I see flames on the ceiling in the living room. And uh, they were flowing just like, like water would on in the ocean, like a wave, it was just rolling down the top of the ceiling. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it startled me for a second. I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I realized the ceiling's on fire. And I grabbed a dog dish full of water, just a stupid attempt, but I grabbed a dog dish and tossed it up there and, and didn't do anything. So I wake up my dad and I said, Dad, look, the house is on fire, get out. And I leave him and I run into the other rooms and I gather up the family and the dogs. And I say, you know, everybody out, the house is on fire. So we all go outside. And, uh, you know, within minutes, the place was completely engulfed. It was an amazing, huge fire. The place was mostly wood. Uh, the fire department got there fairly quick. It started snowing really hard. And uh, they, they can't do anything with it. They're just letting it burn down. And uh, it was such a sense of relief. I remember sitting in the truck with my girlfriend. We were looking at the house, you know, it's almost gone. And it was almost a happy feeling. Even though I've lost everything, I've lost you know, guitars and amplifiers and stuff like that. Uh, we lost everything, but we were happy about it. It's like, thank God we don't have to sleep here tonight. You know, we've been homeless before, we'll make this work somehow. So, pretty strange story. Uh, the property still exists, obviously it's still in Berlin, and there's a mobile home sitting on that spot now. Now, you know, over the years, somebody graded it and put a mobile home on it. And I've always wanted to stop by there and ask them, you know, Hey, have you guys ever had any weird experiences over there? Because uh, there was definitely something wrong with that place. You, like I said, you could sense it. Some people sense stuff, and everybody could sense it. That house, there was no even, even my dad could sense it. So that was that was pretty cool. That was a, a really legit 
haunted house. There's a bunch of other stuff that happened in a place that right at the moment I don't remember. These are some of the highlights, but let me tell you, that was one spooky sucker. Uh, next story is gonna be, you know, episode four will be a cop story again. And eventually I'm gonna be inviting other police officers to share some of their stories with us. And uh, there's a bunch of them, trust me. Um, you know, I've never given up my resume, but I've been a police officer and a corrections officer. Corrections six years and law enforcement for, you know, 20 plus years. Uh, we've all seen a bunch of stuff and uh, willing to share this stuff with you guys and see what you think about it. Okay. Christine, do you have anything to say? No. No? Did you like that story? That was a pretty good story. I like the extra thunder and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was awesome. Uh, sound effects. We like it that way. All right, so until next time, please, uh, you know, you know what you got to do on the videos. You know, you know what you got to do on YouTube. I'm not going to say it because I said in the first episode, I'm not going to say this every time, but you know what you got to do, especially if you want to win a half ounce silver bar and the silver will keep going up. Um, <clears throat> eventually, I'm going to give away one ounce and then we're going to keep going up. So until next time, see ya. Bye. Clean those up. So are you scared of spider? Yes, I hate spiders. Look at it, you see. Clean those up. So are you scared of spider? Yes, I hate spiders. Look at it, you see from here. No. Now that's on a blooper reel for sure. <laughs>